you ever think about how things in life operate kind of like the gears in a big machine, right? The, 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 the gears affect one another. When one is doing something, it affects something else. And the butterfly effect is kind of the same thing, right? A butterfly flaps its wings in Taiwan and you end up with a hurricane in Haiti, right? Across the world. Um, and everything is sort of interconnected in some way. The same thing is true inside of us in many ways and in our minds and with ourselves. And, and so um, I want to talk a little bit in this video about the self-fulfilling prophecy, the idea of a self-fulfilling prophecy and, and that what we do in one area affects something else and affects, you know, has, has a ripple effect in some ways is what the self-fulfilling prophecy says. So let's take a look at it. What do we mean? First of all, what's a self-fulfilling prophecy? Um, let's start there. So the self-fulfilling prophecy starts with an attitude. We have different attitudes about things and, and feelings about things and expectations. So our attitude then though will affect in many ways our behavior. Right? Our attitude leads to a particular behavior. If we have a good attitude about something, it's going to cause us to act one way. If we have a bad attitude about it, it's going to affect, uh, cause us to uh, um, uh, behave in a different way. Right? So our attitude affects our behavior. And then our behaviors then, again, that kind of domino effect or the butterfly effect, our behavior then uh, it, uh, can impact the outcome of a situation. Right? So our attitude affects the way that we behave in a particular situation. And then that, that behavior will affect in some ways, the outcome potentially, right? Let's, so let's talk about what we mean here. First of all, um, let's set the stage. Let's say you get invited to a party. Yay, you get invited to a party, right? Uh, everybody likes to go to a party and you start thinking about this party and you know these people, you know this person. And so you, you're thinking to yourself, gosh, I, you know, should I go to this party? Should I not go to this party? I want to go to this party, but you know, when I go to, go to parties at this place, um, when they have a party, they always have, diet pepsi to drink and i hate diet pepsi and it's always country music from start to finish oh my gosh it's all country music and diet pepsi and i guess i'll go but but this party's never going to be very good because it's all going to be diet pepsi and country music and it's going to be a terrible party so oh whatever i'll go anyway i have to go i guess so uh, so you go and you end up that guy on the couch or the person on the couch who just looks like they're having a miserable time they're snacking on stuff and and of course they get there it's all diet pepsi and country music so you're having a miserable time and and, uh, and then afterwards you say to your friend i told you that i was going to be miserable this whole time because of the Diet Pepsi and country music. I didn't want to go anyway. Shouldn't have gone. I shouldn't have gone. I should have known better. But in what way? I mean, who wants to be at that party and talk to the person who's sitting on the couch and that's being miserable, right? So no wonder nobody came up and talked to you. Your attitude affected your behavior, which in turn had some impact, at least on the outcome in that situation, right? People avoided you because you were the miserable and doofus on the couch, right? So, um, all because of that. So, um, but you, you know, next time you think about it again, you, you think it over and you think, eh, there's Diet Pepsi and there's country music, but you know, I can live with that. I, can, I really want to go see my friends. And so your attitude is different this time you're going out. So you, you think, oh, it's going to be a lot of fun this time. So you go and you have fun. You, you have fun. It's amazing how your attitude affects your behavior. You don't sit on the couch moping. You go out and you talk to people and you, you enjoy people and you play games and you do stuff because when you get there, you see the Diet Pepsi and the country music and you think, eh, who cares? Let's have a good time anyway, right? Your attitude then affects your behavior, which can then affect your outcome. It's kind of a silly example, but uh, but let's let's look at another one here. Uh, let's Let's think about a job interview. You find out you get a job interview and you go to a friend and you say, um, you say to your friend, I have an interview at this, at the place where you work and it's for this job. And what do you think? And they say, oh, I don't know. That's, you're not really that qualified. And they've got somebody in house that they're really looking at for that. You know, good luck, but I don't, it's probably, don't get your hopes up. It's probably not going to work out. So when you go to the interview, you're like, oh, this is going to not be very good. So you don't bother putting a lot of effort into it. And, you know, you kind of, your attitude, then your negative attitude affects your behavior going into it. And, and that in turn could affect the outcome, right? If people, you know, when you're interviewing, nobody's going to want to hire somebody who doesn't look like they want to, or it looks like they don't want to be there and doesn't look like they're interested in the job and so forth because you've already decided you're not going to get it. As opposed to, you know, your friend says, oh yeah, that'll be great. You'll be great for that job. Or, or you in your own mind decide this is, this is the job I'm going to be good at. I'm going to, you know, my attitude's going to be good for this. And you, you pump yourself up and you go in and you have energy and you have the right answers and you, you're excited about the position and things. And then, uh, then you may have a better chance of the job. Now it doesn't guarantee you your job. I'm not saying it's going to manifest itself, but, but you're putting yourself in a better position, right? For a different outcome, your attitude affects your behavior, which in turn affects potentially the outcome in that situation. 
And that's, in essence, a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's, that's really what we're talking about. There are really two types of self-fulfilling prophecies. So one is self-imposed. It's one that we kind of create in our own minds. And, you know, we do this all the time. We let our mind run away with this in one direction or the other, positively or negatively, through that self-talk. Right? Self-talk really is a determining factor in the self-fulfilling prophecy. So uh, we have these self-imposed ones, though, where just by ourselves, we develop the, a particular attitude about something, and then that affects our behavior and potentially the outcome. We can do that all on our own, positively or negatively, right? We can get in this negative kind of self-talk spiral that brings us down and affects our behavior in that way. Or we can, you know, be conscientious of, of having positive self-talk and building ourselves up and and uh, and having a, a positive self-imposed self-fulfilling prophecy as well. The other type of self-fulfilling prophecy is one that's imposed kind of by others, um, meaning that uh, that um, uh, somebody like like when you went to your friend and they gave you that input about no, I don't think that's going to go very well for you, or yeah, that that's going to be great. That can plant a seed in our mind that, that begins that self-fulfilling prophecy as well. It can come from from outside of us and come from others. Really, the key is is kind of breaking the cycle with that that self-talk. It's recognizing that we control our self-talk. Again, it's not that we can manifest these things positively all the time, but we can put ourselves in a better position much of the time by breaking the cycle of negative self-talk and engaging in positive reinforcement and visualization and really driving our self-talk in that kind of um, positive um, way. So if you have any questions about uh, about self-fulfilling prophecies or anything else related to the self, please feel free to email me. I'd love to chat with you via email and uh, and discuss anything related to the self or communication further. In the meantime, I hope that you will be conscientious of your self-talk and the way that it Im impacts um, our self-fulfilling, uh, can impact the self-fulfilling prophecy for better or for worse. <laughs>